Welcome to Math TV with Professor V. It's Friday, November 4th, 2022, and here is the integral of the day. We have antiderivative of cosine inverse of x dx, also known as arc cosine of x dx. So we actually should know the derivative of cosine inverse of x. However, its antiderivative is not so obvious, probably not one that you've memorized. So what do we do? We're actually going to utilize integration by parts here. So when you're choosing u and dv for this scenario, like I just said, we know the derivative of cosine inverse of x, meaning that is the optimal choice for u u is going to be cosine inverse of x. It would make no sense if cosine inverse of x was dv, because then you would have to find v, its antiderivative, which we don't know. That means dv is just going to be plain old dx. And then now, okay, du, you should know this, it's negative 1 over square root 1 minus x squared dx. What I think of to myself is it pretty much has, cosine inverse has the same derivative as sine inverse of x. It's just, it's got that extra negative, which makes sense because derivative of cosine x is also negative sine x. All right, and then if dv is dx, then that makes v equal to x. And then I always set it up the same way, uv, so I just think that diagonal product that does not get integrated Hooray, because we don't know how to integrate cosine inverse of x. Minus v du, but check this out. I already got another minus sign, so that's going to change that to plus mm -hmm, x over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Lovely. Now from here, let's think to ourselves, how are we going to evaluate this antiderivative? Well... I'm noticing that underneath the radical, I have a quadratic expression, and in the numerator, I have x to the first power. So it's a great time to do u substitution. But remember, we already used up the variable u when we did by parts, so pick a different letter. I like to switch to t when this comes up. So we're gonna go ahead and let t equal one minus x squared and then dt would be negative 2x dx. Does that match what we have in our integral? No, we need just x dx. So negative 1 half dt, that's equal to x dx. Fabulous. So let's go back, make our change of variables. We still have x cosine inverse of x there. And then now I'm gonna have minus 1 half integral dt over square root of t. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's see now, x cosine inverse of x minus one half, let me rewrite this as t raised to the negative one half power dt. And then when we anti-differentiate, you're gonna add one to the exponent here and then divide by the new exponent. So we've got x cosine inverse of x minus one half. Adding 1 is going to give me t to the positive 1 half. If I divide by the new exponent, dividing by 1 half is equivalent to multiplying by 2 over 1. And then we've got plus c. All right, almost there. This 1 half and 2 cancels. I can write this as x cosine inverse of x minus... Instead of t to the 1 half, I'm going to rewrite that as square root, not t. What was t equal to originally? Aha, uh -huh. 1 minus x squared. Okay, come back to us, 1 minus x squared. We need you now. Plus c. Ba -doom boom So, there it is. There you have it. This is the antiderivative of cosine inverse of x dx. Like I said, it's not one that you probably memorized, you know, you have to derive it using integration by parts. And I wouldn't honestly bother memorizing it. This didn't take too long. So if you ever need it, you should be able to replicate the process. Okay, if you heard a little thud, that was us getting our newspaper delivered. We still like my husband likes to read a paper, like a physical paper still. 
Anyways, hope everyone has a lovely Friday. Is anyone up to anything fun this weekend? If you want to see what I'm up to, I'll post a little bit on Instagram and TikTok at Math TV with Professor V. Give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed the integral of the day, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate the support. And stay tuned. We got lots more good stuff coming your way. Bye, guys.